It costs over 2.2 million liters of fuel every year just to keep one settlement warm. That fuel is flown 700 kilometers to a gravel runway 817 kilometers from the North Pole. This isn't fiction. This is the price of building in a place that's trying to kill you. Engineers have always built on the edge, but some projects go further. They fight 30 meter waves, walk on moving ice, and hide in mountains that look like Mars. How do you design a building that can never be reached where failure means death. These are the seven most remote buildings on Earth. We begin in the Atlantic Ocean at the loneliest building in the world, Bishop Rock Lighthouse. It's built on a tiny rock ledge, just 16 meters wide, four miles from the nearest land. The North Atlantic tried to destroy this project before it was even lit. The first attempt in 1847 was a 10,000 pound screw pile tower designed to let waves pass through it. On February 5, 1850, a storm swept the entire structure away. The lead engineer, James Walker, realized his mistake. You can't trick the ocean, you have to fight it. His second attempt was a 35 meter solid granite tower with a base 10 meters wide. The lowest blocks had to be laid underwater, but even that wasn't enough. In 1887, engineers had to return. They encased the entire original lighthouse inside a new, thicker granite shell, like a suit of armor over another suit of armor. The final 49-meter tower, automated in 1992, is a monument to defiance, built not once, but twice. Bishop Rock was built to save ships from a dangerous rock, but our next building was built to save humanity from itself. Just 1,300 kilometers from the North Pole, a concrete wedge juts out of a frozen mountain. This is the Svalbard Global Seed Vault, humanity's doomsday backup plan. Inside, three giant rooms, 120 meters deep in the rock, hold over 1.3 million seed samples from almost every country. The engineering plan was simple and cheap. For only 8.3 million euros, they would use the natural, frozen permafrost to keep the vaults at a perfect minus 18 degrees Celsius, even if the power failed. It was designed to survive anything. But in 2017, the unthinkable happened. The vault was breached, not by war or disaster, but by the very thing it was built to outlast, climate change. Unseasonably warm weather and heavy rain caused the fail-safe permafrost to melt, sending water gushing into the 145 meter entrance tunnel. No seeds were harmed, but the design's core premise failed. The fix? A massive 20 million euro upgrade more than double the original cost to install new waterproof concrete tunnels and powerful artificial cooling systems. The engineers at Svalbard had to re-engineer their building when the ground became unstable. But what if your building sits on a platform that is designed to move and break apart? To survive, you can't just build stronger, you have to build a city that can run. This is Halley 6, a British research station in Antarctica. It looks like a sci-fi movie, but every part of its design is a solution to a deadly problem. It's built on the Brunt Ice Shelf, a massive slab of ice that is slowly cracking and moving toward the sea. The previous five stations were all crushed or abandoned. The engineering challenge was immense. The station had to be built on sea ice only one meter thick. This meant no single piece could weigh more than six tons. That six ton limit defined everything. Engineers in South Africa prefabricated the entire station as eight Lego modules. These modules were shipped, assembled, and put on giant skis. The station has two modes. First, it climbs. Hydraulic legs lift the ponds 1.5 meters every year to stay above the burying snow. Second, it skis. 
In 2017, when a giant crack threatened the station, operators lowered all eight modules onto their skis, hooked them to bulldozers, and towed the entire 25.6 million pound city 23 kilometers across the ice to safety. Halley 6 is a masterpiece of modern, mobile engineering. But what happens when the problem isn't moving ice, but thin air? And what if you had to solve it, not with modern computers, but with 1930s grit? This is the Sphinx Observatory, a steel and concrete lab bolted to a cliff 3,571 meters up in the Swiss Alps. Built in 1937, it's a place where the air is thin and winter never ends. But the building itself isn't the real marvel. The real impossible build is the supply line. To even reach the site, workers first had to dig the Jungfrau Railway. From 1896 to 1912, they blasted a 7.1-kilometer tunnel through the mountains. Every piece of the Sphinx, every bag of concrete, had to be hauled up this 1-meter gauge track. From the train station, a 108-meter elevator takes you to the top. When that lift was upgraded in the 1990s, engineers hit a terrifying problem. The heat from their work started melting the permafrost. The rock began to move. Their solution? They installed a cooling system to refreeze the mountain at minus one degree Celsius, holding the rock in place while they finished. The Sphinx engineers had to fight freezing temperatures at 3,500 meters. But our next location is so hot and so dry, it makes the Alps look like a paradise. How do you build an oasis on a planet that looks just like Mars? This is the Paranal Residencia, a hotel for astronomers in the middle of Chile's Atacama Desert. It's so dry here, the landscape hasn't seen life in millions of years. This 12 million euro hotel is an engineering oasis. Instead of fighting the extreme heat, the architects built with it. The entire 10,000 square meter L-shaped building is built into a depression in the mountain, using the earth itself as insulation. The secret is thermal inertia. The massive concrete walls soak up the sun's baking heat all day. Then, when the desert temperature plummets at night, the concrete acts like a battery, slowly releasing that warmth into the 108 hotel rooms. The concrete itself was a logistical nightmare. Every liter of water needed to mix it had to be trucked in from the nearest town, 120 kilometers away. And that reddish alien color? That's not paint. Engineers mixed iron oxide pigment directly into the concrete to make the building blend in with the Martian landscape. The Paranal Hotel is an oasis designed to look like Mars. But to understand what it feels like to live on another planet, the isolation, the danger, the total reliance on technology, you have to go to our next location. Welcome to Concordia Station, or White Mars. It's a French and Italian base 1,100 kilometers inland on the Antarctic Plateau. The air here is so thin and the temperatures drop to minus 80 degrees Celsius. For nine months of the year, including 105 days of total darkness, no one can leave and no rescue is possible. This 1,500 square meter station is an engineering experiment in survival. The most important design feature is psychological. The base is split into two 18 meter diameter towers. One tower is noisy with the gym, social rooms, and restaurant. The other is quiet with sleeping quarters and labs. This separation is vital for the sanity of the 13 person winter crew. The life support is from a spaceship. All drinking water is melted from snow. To save power, an ESA-designed system recycles 85 to 95 percent of all gray water from showers and kitchens using reverse osmosis. The European Space Agency uses Concordia to study how humans cope with the extreme isolation before we send them to Mars. Concordia is the most planet-like place on Earth, but there is one stop left. It's not the most isolated, but it is the absolute final northernmost stop on the globe. This is Canadian Forces Station Alert. It is the northernmost permanently inhabited place on Earth, 
just 817 kilometers from the North Pole. Here, temperatures hit minus 40 degrees Celsius in a polar night that lasts for months. Alert isn't one building. It's a sprawling, 90-building station with one critical lifeline, a 1,675-meter gravel runway. Everything comes by air. Operation Box Top, a massive military airlift, flies in C-17s to feed the station's generators. It's a black hole for fuel, burning over 2.2 million liters every year just for heat and power. The engineering here is a battle of paradoxes. Take fire. A $6 million project was needed because firefighting at minus 40 degrees Celsius is almost impossible. The station's water comes from a lake 2.6 kilometers away and is stored in two small tanks. That's not enough. And if you do spray it, the water freezes instantly, destroying everything. It is a place held together by fuel, logistics, and a profound respect for the cold. Which of these impossible builds would you least want to be stranded in? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications.